What's up everybody, another beautiful day in the Dragon Isles, and we're back with some more Mythic Raid Guides. Today, we're taking a look at Mythic Primal Council. Now, I'll be going over most of the mechanics, how to deal with them, and our overall tactic for this fight. Setup-wise, you want 2 tanks, 4 healers, and 14 DPS. With more gear, you could potentially go for a 5th healer, but at the moment, it did not seem needed. Now, this fight is all about 4 target cleave, so make sure you're running AoE or cleave builds. Think of the pet! Some classes have four target builds, some have just pure AoE, so whichever lets you slap four targets the most. Think of the potential. So what's new for the Primal Council on Mythic? Well, apart from the standard numerical tuning, like everything has more health, slaps harder, meaner overlaps, all that good stuff, you now have to deal with conductive marks that can only be removed by cuddling with an earthen pillar. <laughs> and during Cadra's Ice Raft's Primal Blizzard, whenever you dip into the scorched ground that the axes leave behind, it will get removed or parts of it, which means you should aim to only reset your blizzard debuff once or twice per blizzard, preferably once to avoid depleting it too fast, or rather depleting it before other players can reset their stacks and they turn into popsicles. But it also means you will have a lot more space as you'll be able to vacuum up all that scorched ground whenever there's a blizzard. So how do we deal with all of that and the fight in the simplest way possible? Just nuke for it? Well, when it comes to the conductive marks, what we did was a a few seconds before every conductive mark, everyone spreads. Yes, melee as well. Especially important for all the pesky melee DPSers. Don't be greedy. So when marks go out, take a deep breath. Count to half a second. Check if you have a mark. And if you do, check your surroundings and then start running like a madman. Rather than the, ah, oh, I got marked. Uh, I might lose DPS if I AFK for half a second. I uh, better just run. And then you spread it to eight other players. Now, to help with this, we also always try to keep one one pillar active near melee wherever we happen to be. Cue the picture. Which ties into the axes and scorched ground. So whenever axes went out, we had one axe for all the ranged players and one for melee and tanks. The ranged axes tried to blow up as many earthen pillars as possible and melee tried to blow up any pillar range won't reach whilst still leaving one or two pillars near boss, depending on how they spawn of course. If you can consistently always only leave one pillar up, that's awesome, but it can be tricky. Because keep in mind that the raid takes more damage the more pillars there are up, and doing it this way will naturally lead to you having scorched ground near both range and melee to ease up the primal blizzard resets. So yeah, always leave one in melee. So let's break down the fight a bit. Tanks, make sure to always keep the bosses stacked to the best of your abilities. Swap after each tank buster, which is Opal Fang's Crush or Ember's Slashing Blaze. Whichever tank is currently tanking Ember, keep in mind that Slashing Blaze is in fact a cone. So be careful where you aim it. And do not help with soaking axes when you're tanking Ember, as you never want Ember to move in towards the raid. Again, frontals and stuff. Now our tanks swapped position with each other following each boss swap, so Ember's cone never changed direction, which helped us poor melee brain DPSers. On top of this, you want to make sure to have a interrupt rotation for both Dathea and Kadros to minimize raid damage. You want a bloodlust on pull, tank bosses near the middle, and range be more out towards the outer circle of the room. Move bosses a bit when first pillars spawn as you'll get marks shortly after and you want to make some space. When you get your first axis you can clear all pillars as you'll get new ones shortly after. However, following that you mostly always want to leave one pillar up near melee for those easy resets when it comes to conductive marks. If you clear all of them you might get times where marks go out and there are no pillars up. However, they will always spawn a few seconds after so if that happens just stay spread and clear when they spawn. Don't panic. When you get Primal Blizzard, you want to reset once when you have around 5 or 6 stacks. Doing so will leave you with 4 to 5 stacks of this debuff when Blizzard ends, which reduces your fire damage taken by 8 ton for 15 seconds, which reduces raid damage taken when you soak the axis. Big brain. Now around the 145 mark, you will get a nasty overlap where you get axis and marks overlapping, so you'll need to soak axis while the marks are going out. We just try to spread and move fast when mark spawned, but you can also have axe players potentially solo it with defensive cooldowns, an external, and 4 or 5 stacks of the blizzard debuff. That is, if you're having a ton of issues surviving this particular overlap. Other than that, there's really no need to solo them. And yeah, other than that, this fight really is just all about getting conductive marks under control, clearing blizzard debuff properly, and getting pillars under control, as they'll nuke the raid if you're swarmed by them. If you're stuck with a ton of scorched ground, you can have a few players clear 
extra during Blizzard just to clean up the room a bit more. But I recommend assigning players to this, because if you tell everyone to clear more, you're gonna end up with someone shouldering that burden alone and vacuuming up all of it before the raid has time to reset. There's always someone. Trust me, I got this. But yeah, spread for conductive mark, spread before conductive mark, and the marks that are conductive, you wanna spread before them. Make sure to kill the bosses at the same time as when one dies, it's gonna start AOEing the raid, so make sure they die within just a few seconds of each other. And that's pretty much it for the Mythic Primal Council. Let me know what you think about this fight on Mythic. And if you have any questions at all about this encounter, hit me up in the comments or become a patron or Twitch sub and get access to the Stanky Discord, where you can get help with anything raiding related and it's filled with a ton of awesome people to help you out with any questions you might have, as long as they're PvE related. I'm also streaming all of my raid progression on Twitch, so make sure to check that out, Stanky Gaming. And don't forget the usual stuff, like, comment, subscribe and ring that notification bell, it really helps me out. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you next time.